about to uh, get moving. We'll go across Barton Broad, down past Howe Hill, and then up to the Swan Inn where we've booked lunch today. Hoping that the sun will stay like this. We're having a great time. So at 10.26 in the morning, we're taking it easy, enjoying the occasion, leisurely cruising into Barton Broad, and after that, through some delightful scenery to the historic village of Horning. A broad, by the way, is a broad stretch of water, actually an artificial lake, that was formed when peat was dug out of the ground to be used as fuel a few centuries back, and the diggings later flooded, creating the broads that are around 6 to 12 feet deep, and usually joined to rivers, It's actually Saturday morning, and maybe the weather forecast has scared away the sailing boats that usually proliferate on the broads on Saturday. Barton Broad is the second largest broad, and a great place to sail as the flat land around allows the wind access, as is obvious here. This clinker-built boat was certainly having fun. I had no idea of its class, but later was told that it is a bitten class, clearly a broads class. Thank you, David, for that information. Bella is feeling a little cold. This is always a memorable trip for Nate and me. We've been here many times. When I asked him where they would like to go for a family trip, this was the first place he mentioned. Even for Amy, this is her fourth trip, and the kids have been here twice before. If you count a few months before they were born, they've been here three times. Ben's favorite occupation is reading books. He read 89 books in the last two months. I love these quiet mornings on the broads. We then enter the River Ant, which passes through the delightful village of Ersted one of the prettiest villages on the Broads, with thatched roofs and a variety of architecture. Every time I pass here, I want to buy a house here. A beautiful village with easy access to the Broads, and especially the nearby Barton Broad for sailing. Whenever we travel through this part of the Broads, we're invariably accompanied by birdsong.
It even has its own village stays. place to cruise through, but it's a great place to explore by canoe. Then past Howe Hill, a must-see place, where one can visit the eel catcher's cottage, take a trip through the marshes and view the wildlife on the electric eel boat, or stroll through the meadow and gardens looking for swallowtail butterflies and pheasant. Windmills are common on the broads, built by millers to grind corn, but also used for drainage. They're certainly picturesque. There are a number of bridges on the broads and we have to be careful that we have clearance when we go under. This is Ludham and to get under Ludham Bridge we have to lower the canopy and the windscreen and as you can see it's very narrow with only a few inches each side and above as we go through. I think one of the reasons why I like a broad's holiday so much is that I am able to simply sit on the boat, watch the world go by, enjoy the remarkable scenery, observe the wildlife, and just relax. If there's something that I would love to see happen here, it would be a transitioning to electric boats. When in Norway I noticed this was happening there as the ferries were slowly converting to electric. Quite apart from the pollution aspect, what a joy it would be to silently cruise along. When I'm in a sailing boat and all I can hear is the sound of the water rushing past, it's a real pleasure. Maybe in the next few years, we can see this transitioning. As we cruise along, I realize everybody is able to do their own thing. Ben and Bella looking for birds and wildlife me shooting my video and every now and then a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and a biscuit appears. No need to look for a coffee shop, it's all here. We can also decide to stop off in places, have a walk around and look around the shops, maybe have a meal. It's 
So I point out things that are interesting for the kids to see. I suppose from a boat we also get a different facet of life. No traffic here and no crowds. We're soon arriving in Horning. And what has to be the most interesting and scenic part of the Broads as we cruise from Horning to Roxham? the Ferry Inn with its famous carvery, and the relatively tame heron that is invariably sitting outside. As we'll only be eating one meal on the broads this time, we decided to give the Ferry Inn a miss and enjoy the Epicurean pleasures of the Swan Inn. Our plan is not only to eat lunch at the Swan, but also take a stroll around Horning. On the way, passing another icon of the Broads, the little windmill house here. There are some very beautiful homes here. I never tire of cruising this stretch of water, and I've been coming here since 1964. There are some fascinating houses. This one appears to be built over a boathouse. And here comes the Albion, a Norfolk wherry that were used in times past to transport goods and are now used as pleasure boats. I've often seen them, but have seldom seen them in sail. Today, no exception. The Albion, built in 1898 at Ulton Broad. I imagine there was not enough wind for it to sail today, but the flag on the mast would seem to indicate that there's quite a breeze blowing up there. Oh, 
Um, right, another. Right. I always enjoy cruising down this stretch of river. There are a number of places to eat here in Horning. Even here the bird song is remarkable. And if you would like to see it right now, there's a webcam so you can take a look. See what is happening at Horning right now. The new inn, a great place to eat. If mooring is available, that is. The Swan Inn is an iconic building overlooking a 90 degree bend in the River Burr. Originally it was a cottage built in 1696. But the main part of the present building dates from the early 19th century. Time for lunch. <laughs> 